morning. Happy Easter. Yesterday morning, I opened the church, and I was struck like I hadn't been before by the bare altar, the empty tabernacle, and the unlit tabernacle. There I was moved to pray. I resisted at first, but then surrendered to it. I mounted each step of the sanctuary, and there, just like I did on Good Friday, lay prostrate. Lord, I said, make me one with the buried Christ. Lord, sanctify my wounds. Lord, glorify my wounds. Today, Christ rises from the dead, gloriously wounded. Last night at the Easter Vigil, as we blessed the candle, we declared, by his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. With those words, the priest completes the consecration of the Easter candle. That candle cannot be what it is meant to be until it is wounded. It wasn't let until after it was wounded. Only then is the Easter proclamation sung. The Easter candle is a gloriously wounded candle. Its light is a gloriously wounded light. Suffering with Jesus changes us. We're here, folks. We've arrived. It is resurrection. It is Easter. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This morning I'd like to reflect on why Christ rises from the dead with his wounds and what that means for all of us. The same body that was crucified. That very same body is glorified in the resurrection, and that body still bears wounds, now holy and glorious. We're not talking about scars here, but wounds, open wounds, holy and glorious. Theologians declare that Christ still carries these wounds in his ascension. The book of Revelation, which depicts Christ seated at the right hand of the Father, describes Christ as the slain lamb. Christ rises with his wounds, ascends with them, and now sits wounded at the right hand of his Father. Now, his wounds are not only holy and glorious, they are eternal. He retains his wounds forever. Would we have Christ retained his wounds. Do we think it's a good idea? The wounds that come from the most humiliating of deaths, the cross, wouldn't it have been more fitting for the Father to completely heal them, to abolish them, to take them away? The Father certainly can. If he can raise Jesus from the dead, he certainly could have completely healed his wounds, and yet he chooses not to completely heal them, not to abolish them, not to take them away, but rather to make them holy and glorious, to make them eternal. St. Thomas Aquinas deals with this question at length. He asks whether Christ's body ought to have risen with his wounds. He raises a number of objections, the chief one being that the imperfection of wounds diminishes the glory and integrity of Christ's body. Let me say that again. Some object that the imperfection of wounds diminishes the glory and integrity of Christ's body. St. Thomas Aquinas rejects this objection. He responds, these wounds are not an imperfection, but rather a sign of power, a sign of glory. 
The early church fathers also declared that the wounds of Christ are not defects of Christ's body. Rather, the wounds increase the glory and the beauty of that body. St. B, he kept his scars not from inability to heal them, but to wear them as an everlasting trophy of his victory. That when he pleads for us with his Father, he may always show the manner of death he endured for us. St. Augustine, perhaps in the kingdom of God we shall see on the bodies of the martyrs the wounds which they bore for Christ's name, because it will not be a deformity, but a dignity in them, and a certain kind of beauty. Wounds, a trophy of his victory, a sign to his father of his love. A dignity of you. Yes, Christ ought to have risen with his wounds. He wills us to rise with ours. Holy, glorious, and eternal. Our wounds glorified by Christ are not a deformity, but a dignity. Not infamy, but honor. Not weakness, but power. Not defeat, but victory. On that first Easter Sunday, Jesus meets the women who had come to the tomb. He greets them, and in this greeting, not abolishing or taking away their wounds, but rather glorifying them. He visits the apostles and says, Peace be with you. With these words, not abolishing or taking away the wounds of betrayal, abandonment, and unbelief, not abolishing or taking away the wounds of persecution and condemnation but making them holy and glorious. These acts of betrayal, abandonment, and unbelief become occasions of God's glory. These acts of persecution become dignity, love, beauty. Ironically, it's only because of the wound of Thomas's doubt that we know that the Lord's scars are not mere scars, but in fact, open wounds. Put your finger here, the Lord says to Thomas. See my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas has one more gift to give. According to Gregory the Great, in a marvelous way, God's mercy arranged that the disbelieving disciple in touching the wounds of his master's body, should heal our wounds of disbelief. The disbelief of Thomas has done more for our faith than the faith of the other disciples. The wound of Thomas's disbelief has been made holy and glorious, and in a real sense, eternal, as he continues to nourish us and to heal us. Our wounds, glorified by Christ, are not a deformity, but a dignity. Not infamy, but honor. Not weakness, but power. Not defeat, but victory. Where do we go with all of this on this Easter Sunday morning? Well, the first thing I'd like you to do is obey the Lord's command to rejoice. Even if you don't feel like it, even if you don't want to, rejoice. Remember the words of the prophet Nehemiah, today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad, do not weep, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. Rejoicing is our strength, even when we don't feel like it, even when we don't want to. So this morning, put on your church clothes. Clean the house, set the table, and rejoice. Rejoicing is our strength. Rejoicing will allow us to see how God is making our wounds holy glorious, and eternal. When I'm the priest who need me to be, when I'm the priest 
God wants me to be. I'm serving you, not despite my wounds, but in them. God's power is made perfect in my wounds. I can't wait for you to return to this church and this altar. I can't wait to see you full of you. I can't wait to see the work that God has done in your life during this time. The work he's done in your family's life. Suffering with Jesus changes us. We know that a little more deeply now. And on the other side of all 